Hello again, everybody, and welcome uh, to this class about the lattice energy and the Born-Haber cycles. Okay, and uh, during this class, we will be trying to give a definition of the lattice energy. We will talk about the enthalpy change of atomization, the electron affinity, and also we will be talking about the trends in electron affinities uh for the group 16 and 17 which means for the non-metals and the halogens in the periodic table okay so the lattice the lattice energy let's try to give a definition for this energy and before doing this as you can see that to form bonds uh, or during the formation of bonds there is an exerting of heat which means that this reaction is exothermic it's an exothermic process here the energy is released actually when the bonds are formed and for breaking bonds once we are breaking bonds in a chemical reaction this process is an endothermic process which, which means here that the energy is absorbed to break the bonds okay these two points are interesting in our class okay so as you can see in this image here we have a lattice a crystal lattice here which is the lattice of nacl compound or ionic compound or what we know as the uh, salt the table salt okay so to make this salt actually we will be combining between two ions the cl minus ions and the na plus ions generally salts are made by combining between a metal and the non-metal element okay two generally the non-metal is group one or group two elements which means the alkali metals or the alkali earth metals group two elements and for the non-metals the non-metal uh, ion it's generally uh, a halogen which means group 17 elements so the combination between these two ions will give us a crystal lattice which is a salt, generally a salt. So for our salt, NaCl, we will be combining between Cl- and Na plus ions to make it, okay? So those ions here are bonded together by what we call attractive forces or electrostatic attractive forces, okay? Electrostatic forces of attraction. So here the ionic bonding is a bond which is made between a negatively charged anion and a positively charged cation and the electrostatic forces are what attract those two ions together to make a bond okay that's it so now let's take a look about the lattice energy what is it what is the lattice energy so as a definition the lattice energy is the enthalpy change when we say enthalpy it's the same as saying energy it's the enthalpy change when one mole of ionic compound which means a salt in general of ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ions under standard conditions good Let's see these two examples here. So let's pretend that we want to make the salt, which is a crystal, a solid crystal, NaCl, like you, what you can see here, sorry. Okay, like what you see here, NaCl. So to do this, we will be starting by combining between two ions in their gaseous state, as the definition says. It's the enthalpy change when one mole, one mole of gaseous ionic, comp uh, sorry, of gaseous ionic, excuse me, it is the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic compound, here is it, is formed from its gaseous ions under standard conditions, which means that we will be starting by combining between a metal ion and a non-metal ion in their gaseous state to form the solid crystal, okay? And the energy needed during this reaction is called the enthalpy change of lattice okay and this zero here is referring to standard so the standard enthalpy change of lattice is this enthalpy change you can see here delta h standard of lattice and its value is in this case for nacl is equal to negative 787 kilojoules per mole now let's see 
for magnesium chloride. This is also a salt. Okay, so to make this salt, we will be starting by combining the ions in their gaseous state. Now we will be combining a group two element, which is the magnesium ion in this case, in its gaseous state plus two chlorine ions. Okay, Cl minus in their gaseous state also to have our crystal MgCl2. And the enthalpy change standard of lattice in this case is equal to negative 2526 kilojoules per mole. Okay, as you can see, comparing these two values here, you can see that this value is very exothermic comparing with this one. So here we can say that the lattice energy is always exothermic. This is the first thing to say. Okay, or to remember that it's always exothermic, which means it will be having negative values all the time. So the more exothermic the lattice energy, for example, here in MgCl2, we have a very high value, okay, comparing with this one. So the stronger the ionic bonding in the lattice, this means that the bonds in this ionic compound here are more stronger than the bonds in this one here, okay. And as you can see here, talking about the standard conditions are the conditions for temperature and pressure, which means the standard temperature is equal to 298 kelvins or uh, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, which means room temperature. And for the pressure, it's equal to one atmosphere. Good. Now let's see or let's take a look about the enthalpy change of atomization. As a definition, the enthalpy change of atomization or the standard enthalpy change of atomization we refer to it by delta h standard of atomization it is the enthalpy change or the energy when one mole of gaseous ions is formed from its element under standard conditions okay so the atomization means that we will be starting from the element in its standard conditions and we will be forming the element in its gaseous state okay so the energy needed here is called the enthalpy change of atomization okay so let's see for the first example here for lithium we will start from lithium solid into lithium gas so we'll start with the lithium in it with uh, the element in standard in, stand, in its standard conditions sorry to make the i uh, the the element in its gaseous state and as you can see here it has a positive value which means that this reaction is endothermic and now for chlorine we will be starting from the element chlorine which is a diatomic element okay to form the chlorine atom in its gaseous state actually the element chlorine is found in nature in its gaseous state okay but it's a diatomic element and diatomic elements can be gathered in this sense here as you can see i bring cookies for our new home okay i stands for the iodine i2 br stands for bromine br2 c here stands for carbon sorry for chlorine cl2 4 is for flu fluorine f2 oxygen is standing for uh, sorry, the O here is standing for the oxygen, O2. N uh, from new stands for nitrogen, N2. And H is standing for the hydrogen. Okay. So as you can see here, all those enthalpy changes of atomization are positive, which means endothermic. Good. Now let's take a look about the electron affinity. What is it? So the electron affinity is actually, or we are refining to it by delta H standard of electron affin affinity one. And this one refers to the word first, which means the first standard or the enthalpy change of the first electron affinity. Okay. And it is the enthalpy change when one mole of electrons, one mole of electrons is added to what? To one mole of gaseous atoms, which means an atom in its gaseous state, one mole of electrons is added to one mole of atoms in their gaseous state to form an ion with a single negative charge under standard conditions. 
Okay, so as you can see here, we have Cl in its gaseous state plus one electron will give Cl minus, which means the ion in its gaseous state. Okay, actually we are doing this in a way to calculate the enthalpy change of lattice. And this is what we will be seeing in the next video. Okay, so let's go back here. As you can see here, this enthalpy change of the first atom, uh, of the first electron affinity, sorry, is negative. It has a value which is equal to negative 348 kilojoules per mole for this reaction here. And now for the second reaction, if we start from sulfur and we want to add an electron to this atom of sulfur in its gaseous state to make the ion in its gaseous state now, also the value will be negative. So here it's worthy to note that the second electron affinities are always on the thermic. Remember, the first electron affinity is always exothermic. So the values for the enthalpy changes of the first electron affinities will always be negative, which means exothermic. But now let's let's take a look about these two reactions to see that the second electron affinities they are positive, which means they are on the thermic. And actually, we'll be explaining this in a, an exercise. We will be the we will be seeing the difference why actually those second electron affinities are positive values. Okay, good. Let's see the example here. Now, we will take a look about the electron affinity for the oxygen, which means we want to make the oxygen ion. Okay, we will be adding or the oxide, O2. So this will be done on two steps. First step, starting from the oxygen in its gaseous state and adding one electron to make the ionic oxygen, O- in its gaseous state. Okay, this is the first electron affinity, as, and you can, as you can see here, its value is negative, which means exothermic. Then, to add the other electron, we will be starting now from the ion O- minus in its gaseous state, and we will be adding the second electron to make the oxide ion O2- minus in its gaseous state. And for this reaction, the enthalpy change of the second electron affinity is positive and it's equal here to positive 798 kilojoules per mole okay so now the overall enthalpy change in forming the oxide o2 minus will be actually the sum of these two enthalpy changes which means that we will be adding together the enthalpy change of the first and the second affinity okay and as you can see here that the enthalpy change for making this oxide ion will be equal to delta H standard of the first electron affinity plus delta H standard of the second electron affinity. And we will be calculating the value, which is found to be positive 657 kilojoules per mole. Good. Now let's take a look about the trends in the electron affinities. Okay. How the electron affinity is actually uh, changing across a period and across a group, okay? So let's see here that there is actually less experimental data about the electron affinities compared with the ionization energy, which, me which means that there are not a lot of data about these electron affinities comparing with the ionization energies, okay? So here we can say that generally the electron affinities for the nonmetals, which are group 16 and 17, the nonmetals and the fluoride, uh, sorry, the halogens are, uh, sorry, for nonmetal get more negative, which means more exothermic across a period. Okay, so going across a period. So going across a period from the left of the periodic table to the right of the periodic table, we can say that the values are more negative. Okay, they become more negative passing from the left to the right of the periodic table. Okay, with a maximum at group 17, which means the halogens here. But the pattern is not always, always clear. This is 
sorry, there is no clear pattern in electron affinities down many groups apart from group 16 and 17. Okay, so let's see here for group 16 and here for group 17, which are the halogens. Okay, so the table here shows that here there is a trend to less negative, which means less exothermic passing from chlorine, okay, to bromine to iodine or passing from sulfur to selenium to tellurium, okay. Going down the group, the value of the electron affinity becomes less exothermic or less negative. So why, in your opinion, why? Here, this is actually due to, do, to two, uh, two main things. The first one is the nuclear charge. Going from the left of the periodic table to the right of the periodic table, actually we are increasing the number of protons, okay? While going from the left to the right of the periodic table, we are increasing the number of protons. So the added electron, okay? The added electron to the atom to form the ion, actually, it will be difficult to add an electron. Sorry, it will be easy while going from the left to the right. It will be easy to add an electron. What? Why? Sorry, because the nuclear charge becomes more interesting while going from the left to the right. The number of protons increases. So there will be more attractive forces between the nucleus and the added electron, okay? So this is why the values of the electron affinity are uh, becoming more exothermic, okay? Going across a period. And now, Going down the group, you can see that from chlorine to iodine, the values are what? They have a trend to go less negative. Why? Actually, going down the group, we can say that the ionic, sorry, the atomic radius become more interesting or big. Atoms are or the uh, the atomic radius of the atoms become more interesting going down a group what does this mean this means that the added electron will be added to a level of energy which is which is high because here going down the group the number of energy levels is increasing so this added electron will be added to a level energy which is very far from the nucleus so while going very far from the nucleus it will be difficult for this electron to be added first of all because the attractive forces between the added electron and the, the nucleus will become less interesting okay and also because of the shielding effect, which means that the electrons which are in lower energy level, they will tend to repel this electron, okay? Or to minimize the attractive forces between the added electrons and the nucleus. So this is why going down the group, the value of the electron affinity becomes less exothermic, okay? And here uh, we can add that for fluorine, it's not actually following this trend. Here the value is less exothermic than the value for chlorine. And this is due to the fact that, that for fluorine, actually fluorine has what we call a small atomic radius, okay? By having a small atomic radius, it will have a high electron density, which means that the electrons are in a small volume, okay? So they will repeal, uh, those electrons will repeal each other, okay? The repulsion between the electrons is very high and then the added electron cannot be attracted to the nucleus, okay? So this is why this uh, trend of the electron affinities are like this in group 16 and group 17. Actually, in group 16, 
it's the same thing for those atoms okay going down the group from uh, sulfur to selenium to tellurium that's it so uh, thank you for watching and uh, please don't forget to share like and subscribe and let a comment if you don't mind thank you for watching and goodbye for now